welcome. Find yourself a couple pillows. Take a seat. Press your fingertips by your hips. Press your hands down to lengthen up through your side waist, your side chest. Release your palms to your thighs. Close your eyes. Balance the weight evenly on your two sitting bones. Release your thighs down. From the even and equal weight, your two sitting bones lengthen up through the front of your body. Bring your shoulder blades into your back ribs. Broaden across your collarbones and lift your chest. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. Take slow, even breaths. Gently open your eyes, come over to your hands and knees, place one pillow or two for underneath your head for Adhamukha Virasana, it's called child's pose. Press your hands down and forward, push your hips back. Press the thumb side of your hand down as you turn your upper arms out. Release your neck. Out of the pose, come to sit in Dandasana, staff pose. Place your right ankle over your left knee, and then bend your left knee, reach your arm with your right hand, or left hand actually, and interlace your finger between your toes, opening up the space between your toes and getting a hip stretch at the same time. You can pull the leg in more, you can come to fire log pose and get both toes at the same time. So on this pose, the shins are stacked on top of each other, the ankles are in line with the knees. And spread your fingers apart, get more space between your toes. You can lean forward and get a little more hip stretch and release. On the other side, place your left leg over your right. And then use your right hand, interlock your fingers between your toes. Bring the knees in. And then if that's going well, you need a little more stretch, come into fire log pose. Interlacing the fingers on both toes, or one toe, whatever works. You can lean forward to stretch more. You can lean backwards to stretch less. You can come out, come back to Dandasana. Come over to your hands and knees. Now we're going to place the pillows directly under the wrist. They're together. And the wrist hits the back of the pillow so the wrist is slightly elevated. <coughs> and 
And then you're going to tuck your toes underneath and come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. Now this use of the pillows won't affect everybody in the same way. Some people find this a relief for their wrist. They have a little prop underneath them. It's kind of like a slant board. Also, it reminds the uh, carrying angle people to lift the forearm away from the floor. At the same time, you have to turn the upper arms out. Press down through the thumb and index finger. Push back through the hips. come down. We're going to come into Uttanasana next. Forward fold. So take a pillow, just one, and place it right at the top of the thighs. It's a little hard to see there, but that's right where my thighs end and my hips begin. And then I fold. Now if you can't reach the floor, you can place your hands on your shins. Or you can place your hands on your shins and pull yourself more deeply down. And then after you've been there for a bit, pulling yourself in, you're going to reach up and grab the corners of the pillow and try to slide it out without coming away from the thighs. You may feel a little release in the thighs and able to get further into Uttanasana. Hands on the hips, inhale, come back up. Alright. So next we're going to work on some Malasana. So my heels are on the pillow. I extend my arms forward. My toes are on the floor. I bend down. Bend forward. Take the knees apart. And back up. Back to Tadasana. It's on the pillow. I show from the front. Bend down. Take the knees apart. Lean forward. Pressing through the heels, inhale, come back up. Tadasana. Arms forward, bend your knees. Heart. And come back up. You can always use two pillows for this. Okay, so now I'm going to lean back and let myself sit on the pillow just a touch and then come back up. Now if you can keep your heels down without using the pillow, walk forward. Then down. Back to the pillow and back up. Now this time we're going to come down, go back to the pillow. Oh, maybe the next time. <laughs> back to the pillow, sit down. Then push forward and come up. Now when you come up, you have to press more with the big toe side of the foot. Now if you're having trouble coming up, you can take two pillows or three pillows. And I'll make it a little higher, a little easier to come up. Sit back down. And back up. Then Cross your right foot over your left, arms forward, sit down, come into Sukhasana, forward and up, uh, maybe. A little more challenging on uh, the rocks than it was up when I practiced it before, but that's okay. That's all part of the fun. Cross the left leg over and back up. 
Now we're going over to Urdhva Prasarda Padasana, also known as 30-60-90 sometimes. So I'm going to place a pillow <coughs> underneath my hips. Take my legs up to 90 degrees, arms overhead. You want the pillow on your, underneath your hips, towards your lower back. Extend your legs up. And then lower one leg down, take the other leg up, and then switch. And then switch a couple times. Keeping your legs straight the entire time. And if the switching is difficult enough for you, then you're going to stay with the switching. Otherwise, you're going to lower the legs together from 90 to 60, 60 to 45, keep your abdomen in, 45 to 30, 30 to about 15, and back up. Now with your next exhalation, lower your legs down to 15, back up to the center, down, and back up. Exhale, keep your abdomen going down. Come back up. Now we're going to switch to a different abdominal pose, Navasana. So you take the, the pillow behind your back to act as a break. So you don't fall into the river. <laughs> so bend your knees in, lift your knees up. You can start with your legs at 45 degrees with the knees bent. Lift the legs out, take the shins parallel, and possibly straighten the legs. And then hold on to the big toes for the Vaya Padakustasana. Extend through the big toes, back to Navasana, back down. That was quick. You need to work on that timing. Alright, and then for a little other pillow fun, if you want to try a little balance, you can just sit on the pillow and come back to Navasana. Maybe, maybe even to Vaya Padagustasana. Have a little trouble there. Extend through the big toes, pull with the arms, lift your chest. And back. Baddha Konasana. Look at the sheet, see what's next. Alright, so I'm going to come to Tadasana with the pillow between my hands. Now if your shoulders are a little tighter, you can grab the corners and grab the sides. I have my thumb in line with my index fingers, so I'm not grabbing it like a pole. Then I'm going to pull my arms apart. It's not something you can really see here, but you'll be able to feel something happening in your neck, between your shoulders. Pulling my arms apart, getting taller. I'm going to take the arms down. I'm going to have the same grip, but I'm going to have it behind my back. Roll my shoulders in, either the two corners or the sides. And I'm going to come into Uttanasana. Hold forward, about halfway, bring the arms up, see how that goes. And then fold forward a little more, taking my arms over my head. I'm leaning forward. I'm not doing very well. I'm lifting up through the back of the thighs. Place your hands on your hips, push through your heels, inhale, come up. Now we're going to Parshvottanasana, so take your feet wide apart, right foot forward, left foot back, turn your hips to face your right foot, hold onto the pillow, place it onto your foot, 
and extend your chest forward. Intense flank stretch. If that's enough for you, stay there. Otherwise, lower the pillow down a little bit. If that's still not enough, take it behind like you did in Uttanasana. Lower your chest along your front leg and then take your arms over your head. Press to the big toe of your right foot to keep your balance. Place your hands on your hips. Inhale, come all the way up. Turn to the other side. Press down through the left big toe, right heel. First, hands on the pillow, maybe lowering the pillow down. If that's going well, you can take your hands behind. Roll your shoulders back. Lower over your left leg and take your arms over your head. Bring your hands back to your hips. Inhale, come up. Turn your feet forward. Step your feet together. This is Vrikshasana, free pose. So if balance is hard enough for you, you don't even have to use the pillow. So stand on the pillow. First in Tadasana. Place your left foot in the center. And then take your right foot to your left calf. If that's going well, you can bring your foot up to the inner thigh. Find your balance there. A little harder on a pillow. Take your arms out to the side, palms up, and lift your arms above your head. You might sway a little bit. Keep your focus. your arms to the side, lower down, release your foot. And switch sides. Balance on your left leg, take your right foot to your left calf. That's going well, bring it further up the leg. As you press your left leg into your right thigh, press your right thigh into your left leg, turn your arms out and over your head. Extend through your fingertips. Find your balance. Find your gaze. It's easy for you, you could always use two pillows. Alright, now we're going to use the pillow as a block. So we're going to come into Uttita Trikadasana, take your feet wide, turn your right leg all the way out, turn your left leg in slightly. Put the pillow by your right foot, your left arm over your head. So the pillows are squishable. So if it's too high for you, you just squish the pillow down. Roll your shoulders back, press down through the big toe side of your right foot. Outer left heel. Press through your left foot. And come all the way up. Switch sides. Turn your left leg out. And turn your right leg in. Which I didn't. There it goes. Alright. And then come into Uchita Trikanasana. Uchita means extended. Uh, 
triangle pose, Trikonasana. So that was the big toe side of your left foot, outer right heel. Rotate your shoulders back. Feet. Inhale, back up. Now we're going to go to the right side again, but this time for Utita, extended partial kanasana, side angle pose. So remember in Uttanasana, the first one we did, we had the pillow at the top of the thigh. That's the same thing that's going on here. So I squish the pillow at the top of my thigh. I'm showing there a little variation. You can put your arm on the pillow as well. So the pillow is at the top of my thigh, pressing that thigh down and back. Left arm overhead, extending from the left fingertips all the way down to the left heel, and then from the left heel all the way up through the fingertips. And if you've been there for a while, you're going to squish it out like you did in Uttanasana. And see how that changes the pose for you internally. Take the arm up. Inhale, back up, turn to the other side. Oh. Pillow on leg. Squish it in there. I'm squishing it in there. With my left hand, you can use a pillow for your other hand, another variation. Keep yourself a little higher up. Right arm overhead. Passing through the heel of the right foot all the way through the right fingertips and then back down from the fingertips to the foot. And after you've been there for a while, scooch the pillow out. If there's any release in the top of the thigh. And then take the arm up. Inhale, come back up. Bring your hands and feet together. One more standing pose, or two more standing poses. First, we were just in a three preparation. So depending on your height, you might need a couple pillows. So you're going to have your feet together, hands on the pillows, extend your left leg back, and then take your right arm forward. So sometimes this is called um, bird dog or something like that. Uh, when you're on your hands and knees, but you're extending from opposite arm and leg. And if you want a little extra challenge, do the same arm and leg. Harder to balance with the pillows than with the blocks. And switch sides. Get your other leg up. You can bend your knee if you can't reach the pillows. I'm showing that. Then extend the opposite arm forward. So you're having opposite arm and leg. It can still be a challenge to balance, but the same arm and leg is much harder. So after you are fairly comfortable with the same arm, uh, opposite arm and leg, try the same arm and leg. Strength in your back. Ah, uh, then come down. <laughs> Prasarada Padottanasana. So you're going to take your feet wide. You can have pillows in front if your head doesn't normally reach the floor. Come down. You can put your hands on your pillows. You can put your head on your pillows. And you can say, hey, that's enough pillows. And come down. Release the back of your neck down. At the same time, press your hands into the floor. Lift your shoulder blades up towards your hips. Keep 
thighs pressing back. Lift your chest, walk your hands forward, place your hands on your hips and come all the way back up. Step your feet together. All right. Now you're gonna have a pillow in the middle and you're gonna lie face down onto the pillow while the pillow's under your hips. Getting ready for Chaturanga Dandasana. So come into Downward Facing Dog. Adhamukhishwanasana, come forward to plank and then bend your elbows and lower onto the pillow. Push back up back to downward facing dog. You may need to adjust the pillow. Let's do it again. Down to Chaturanga Dandasana. I'm all the way down. I'm not actually holding. And then push back up downward facing dog. One more time. Bend your elbows. Slow down slowly. Push through your hands. Lift yourself back up. Oh, let's do another one. And down, oh, all the way down. Alright. Then press through your fingers, roll your shoulders back, take your toes back, come up into Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Keep your shoulders moving away from your ears. Press your feet into the floor. Activate the area right at the top of the hamstrings. Down, a little rest, adjust the pillow, and then come into Salamasana, locust pose. Lift your chest, lift your arms, lift your legs. Extend through your fingertips. And that movement that you see is breathing. Come back down. Now we're going to do it one more time. And we're going to move from Sambhasana to Dhanurasana. So locust to Dhanurasana. Oh, face plant. So I've noticed here that my pillow is a little too far back and it's pushing me forward. So I try to grab both feet at the same time. Lift up, pressing my feet into my hands, my hands pulling up on my legs. Up into Dhanurasana. It's nice because there's no hip grinding into the floor, you got a pillow there. And it's also nice for balance, you can feel whether or not you're more of a chest lifter or a leg lifter. That's pretty obviously more of a chest lifter. Let's go into Ustrasana. This works a lot like putting a bolster on the feet. You can use a couple of pillows, however many you need, to bring your hands back to your feet. Sun's out. I'm putting the pillow on my heels. Press my shins down, move my buttocks down, roll my shoulders back. Engage the tops of my hamstrings and bring my hands back to the pillow and take my head back. As I press my hands into my heels, I press my heels toward the floor, toward the rock. Roll my shoulders back, open my throat. And come back up, sit back onto the. Now you're going to take both pillows for Chaturanga Padasana. Place both pillows between your knees. Squeeze in between your knees. Move your hips towards your feet and lie down on your back. Adjust your hair, it's very important. Alright. So I press my feet into the floor and lift my hips up. And I'm going to roll my shoulders underneath. I roll my shoulders underneath a couple times. 
Press my upper arms down. And while I'm here, I'm squeezing the pillows. fingers towards the sky and press my upper arms down even more. I press with the big toe side of both feet, moving the outer thighs towards the inner thighs. pose is great for strengthening the lower back and back of the body as well as the quads. Lower your hips back down. All right. Now take one pillow and place it under your hips like you did for Urdhva Prasarada Padasana. But you want the, hip, the hips to tilt towards the chest and then hug your knees in towards the chest. See how that feels. Taxation in your hips, in your back. That was a sneeze. And roll over to your side and come up. Now we're going to do a few forward bends. And a twist. So sit on the pillow or two. Bend your right leg in, hug it into your chest. I realize that it's not my right leg. Not your right leg, there we go. Hug it in. And I reach around and put my fingers between my calf and thigh. Other hand behind the back. It's holding onto the corner of the pillow behind my back. I'm taking the elbows away from each other to broaden the collarbones. After I twist, I'm going to look towards the front foot. So my fingers into the cap keep me upright. Switch sides, bring the left leg in, fingers behind the calf, between the calf and the thigh, reach around with my other hand, grab the pillow at the corner, can't grab the corner, grab the edge, I'm bending my elbows to the side, and as I bend my elbows to the side, I look over my front foot. Anytime you bend your elbows to the side, that places your shoulder blades more firmly on your back. Good thing to do in twist. Straight leg pressing into the floor. Turn to the front. Straighten both legs out. We're going to come to Jarnu Shrishasana. So bend your right leg out to the side. So you can sit on a pillow. If your knee is lifted, you can put a pillow underneath your knee. Or, if it's easy for you, you can sit on the floor. Place the pillow on your shin. Press the pillow down. Lift your chest. That's you're a flexible person, you're going to grab your bent knee wrist with your opposite hand, so in this case the right, right wrist is grabbed by the left hand, and come forward over the left leg, resting your head on the leg, or on the pillow on the leg, 
Well, you're going to get a little feedback from the pillow here, whether or not your elbows are even. So my bent knee elbow is a little high, but that is the common mistake. Inhale, come back up. I'm going to switch sides. So, sitting on a pillow. left leg in. Now if the knee is down, that's fine. If it's up, put the second pillow under the knee. If it's easy for you, sit on the floor. Have your hands on the pillow at a tall height or a shorter height. You can use it for underneath your head, the tall height or the shorter height. In this case, grab the left wrist with the right. Get that feedback from the pillow to see if the shoulders are even. So if both elbows are not on the pillow, then chances are your shoulders aren't even. So the lifted elbow, you need to press down more that side of the body. Inhale, come back up. Put your hands down, lift up. Over to Paschimottanasana. That's the same principle as Janitrikasana. If you're tight, you can sit on a pillow or two. Lift your chest. So if you're leaning back at all, you need to sit on a pillow too. Otherwise, I'm going to take a pillow forward, press it down, lift your chest. It for underneath your head, either, either tall or short. Reach around with your arms, grab your feet, fold into Paschimottanasana. It's more likely that your elbows are even here. Press your thighs into the floor. Maybe you can even do without the pillow. And press your, rest your forehead on your shins. So now a little restorative. So you're gonna take the bigger pillow and put it further away from you than the smaller pillow. And you want the smaller pillow to start a little bit above your lower back. My feet are in Baddha Konasana. Slide back. Fix the hair. Roll my shoulders under. And rest in Baddha Konasana. Don't worry too much about how far your feet are from your hips. Use this time to rest. If you don't find Baddha Konasana comfortable, you can straighten your legs out. Take the two pillows and then stand them upright, place them behind your knees. 
back your buttocks under and lie back down. So this works like a bolster under the calves or resting the calves on the chair. Again, to deepen your breath. Bunch your knees in. Roll to your right side as you support your head. Roll a little further to your right side and lift yourself back up to seated. Find your one of your pillows. Sit on your pillow. Sit up straight and tall. Your arms to the side, lift your chest, bring your palms together in front of your heart. Think of something you're grateful for. Namaste. Oh, one more thing. When you come up, come up without your hands. Ah! And we're done.